Well, all right, we got a good video for you today. Lots of performance parts to install on my Predator 224 engine on my Coleman BT200X mini bike. We also got some good riding as well, so enjoy the video. The last video, we put the Max uh, Performance 224 from Harbor Freight on here. Bike performed really well, rode it for like that for a few months, really enjoyed it, but it's time to hop it up. I bypassed the governor and I've been worrying about the stock flywheel on here. So I ordered a hop up kit, one of the most affordable ones I could find on eBay. So let's cross our fingers it works. Got gaskets, an aftermarket lighter aluminum flywheel that shouldn't explode, a high lift cam, billet connecting rod, some aluminum push rods, new rocker arms, heavy duty valve springs, flat top piston, and a different intake and carb. We're also going to be installing some bigger tires on here today. So stick around, enjoy the video. This tire is about an inch taller. It's um, 20 by seven by eight. Eight inch rim, seven inches wide, 20 inches tall. These are 19 by seven by eight. Plus the lugs, I mean, these just had a summer riding on them. They're pretty short. These lugs are massively taller. Unfortunately, with these larger, heavier tires, the gearing will definitely have to be changed. They uh, rob quite a bit of power to spin these bigger tires. The traction is great though, almost too good. I do miss the older tires and the way they kind of flat tracked around the corners, but come mud season, I definitely think these tires are going to really shine. Well, I have a different sprocket here, which is a 60 tooth. The bikes come stock with a 50. This should probably correct some of the gearing with these bigger, heavier tires, but we're going to take care of that a little bit later in the video. First off, we're going to take the side cover off of here and add this aluminum flywheel. I have the cast steel flywheels on these predators can be issues of blowing apart in high RPMs. This is supposed to be rated to, I think 10,000 RPMs and it's supposed to be a 28 degree advance for the ignition. Another thing we're going to do in this uh, stage, we're going to actually get Get rid of the stock air filter and carb we're going to put a nice free flowing air intake and a vm22 carb we're going to run it on the driveway do some tests with my brother's ghost engine and his bike and see if it's actually making similar power or not and then after that we're going to pull the engine completely do all the internals cam connecting rod different rocker arms push rods and valve springs all that stuff so let's get jumping in here and install this flywheel Here's the stock flywheel that came off of this thing. And here is the one I got. I think this is about three and a half pounds. We'll weigh this one and uh, check what it is. But I think the problem is with these flywheels, the cast steel, they can't really handle super high RPMs. Um, it's rare, but they can actually break apart. I've seen a guy in a go-kart where it just blew apart and tore the engine up and he's lucky he didn't get hit with the cast iron. But I think more commonly is these magnets will let go. This does actually have a screw holding it in with epoxy, but I think the magnets can break off and cause all kinds of damage as well. But getting rid of this one and this will be a lot lighter and uh, a little bit more ignition advance as well. So that will help with power.
So this is my original Hyacinth engine and I have fabbed up this simple curved intake manifold for a $15 stainless steel like uh, plumbing fixture I found on Amazon. It's a little hokey but it worked. But I ended up uh, going online and ordering an intake manifold like my brother had. Uh, they seem really well built. This is a Tillotson intake manifold. Here's the part number. But I ordered from Chad's Mini Bikes. I'm not affiliated, he got zero discounts, anything like that. But I want to give him a little shout out because he's a little mini bike fab shop, the Northwest Washington. And I think this was in the 40 some dollar range, but it seems like a super well built intake manifold. Put a link below to his mini bike fab shop. Uh, he's got some pretty good prices on there, so check him out. Man, that Ghost Engine 212 still outperformed my Predator 224 engine. Well, I guess it's time to go back in the shop and tear out my engine and install the rest of the hop-up parts. So you can definitely see the difference between the stock cam and the aftermarket cam. A lot more duration and lift on that one.
so these old parts will never go back in that engine again. The governor and low oil shutdown are good for log splitters and tillers, not so good for mini bikes doing wheelies and steep hill climbs. So here I'm just checking out the thickness between the stock head gasket that came off the engine and the thinner aftermarket one I'm going to be putting on. To add with that thinner head gasket I'm installing, I'm also putting in that flat top piston. That should definitely increase the compression ratio quite a bit. So you can see closely that original piston was dished a bit, which would actually lower the compression ratio. So here I'm just checking the connecting rod to crank clearance with some plastic gauge. These billet connecting rods have a very specific torque sequence to follow. Right on, everything looks good. Now that I know the rod clearance is all in spec, it's time to check the block clearance and see what interference there will be. So I'm working on some clearancing. The dipper down here, it's gonna get clearance on the back of the case. Goes really close. Up here, some clearancing on the top hardware. It clears, but it's super close. And again, a little hard to see, but up at the top, the base of the cylinder, the connecting rod comes pretty close. But we completely stop and hit the cam right up in here. So I think the cam needs to be flattened out a little bit more in the center shaft there. So this touches just a hair now. Almost clearance that. This other side right here where I put some black sharpie marker hits big time. So back to the grinder. Clearance that just a tiny bit more to clear that connecting rod. So on my block, I had a clearance it right here for the connecting rod, up here a little bit, right here for the hardware on the connecting rod. Back here for the dipper, and I had to take a little bit off of here for the cam I'm running. This is already clearance on the stock cam. I just had to remove a little bit more, and um, kept dealing with the cam lobe, just grazing past this connecting rod. So right here, I clearance just on top of my thumb, just a tiny bit, and. Clearance the center, both sides of that cam just a little bit. It looks more than they're really what I took off of here is just some really bad casting, so I clearance that. Stock cam already had some flat spots ground into it, and clearance pretty well. All right, time to start putting everything back together.
So this kit also came with some aluminum push rods, supposedly should help with higher RPMs. So I'm replacing the stock valve springs, which have a tendency to float pretty low on the RPM range to some 26 pound valve springs, which should actually handle, I think, up to about 8,000 RPMs if I can get the engine to rev that high. So if you're thinking about installing one of these higher performance VM22 carbs on your mini bike or go-kart, definitely need to look into the jetting a bit. My brother just posted a video installing one of these carbs on his ghost engine. He covers all the jetting in there. Nice ground platform to start with. So I'll put a link below to that video so you can check it out. So those heavier tires are still hurting me with my off the line performance. He's always got me on that one. But as I'm creeping up the hill here, I'm starting to gain on him quite a bit. So I think once I correct the gearing, I should probably have that ghost engine finally beat. But that thing's pretty good right out of the box, other than a different VM22 carb. That uh, engine does pretty well. So with my Predator 224 engine about broken in with those new parts, it's time to load up the mini bikes and head out for some camping and riding. I'll have a full video of this camping trip with the mini trucks and mini bikes posted pretty soon. Keep an eye out for that one.
pretty typical mini bike fashion the chain came off but i got it back on and just in no time in the next video i'll be addressing the gearing in more detail who knows maybe i'll even revisit that cv transmission again we'll see So here's my brother's BT200X Coleman mini bike with that ghost engine installed. For being fairly bone stock, other than a different carburetor, it goes pretty well. Puts out a fair amount of horsepower. I'll put a link below for his video covering that Predator 212 ghost engine in more detail. If you like this kind of content, I definitely think you'll like his video. Check it out.